So what we want to do now is I want to go up here and rename this layer just so it helps me stay organized. So go right click on that layer, edit layer attributes, and I just name it base. That way I know that this is always my base layer that I'm working from. Any changes that I make on any other layers or just additional layers that I've made, I could always really, I could go back to this base layer and start from scratch. I'm never going to edit this layer. I'm only, only, only going to make duplicates of this layer to do all of my filters or any, any editing on. That way I can always go back to this base layer if I need to later on. So what we want to do now is just right click on this layer and duplicate it. And you just see, you see where it just says base copy. So what I'm going to do here is edit layer attributes and I'm going to name this one warp because that's what we're going to do with a filter in the next little technique we're going to use. So we've got our original base layer and a new layer named warp. Now we can unclick the little eyeball on the base layer now. You're not going to see it anyway because it's the exact same layer above it. So everything above blocks out everything below. So, um, so just uh, you can uncheck the eyeball there. And then working on our warp layer, we want to duplicate it. So right click and hit duplicate layer. And now you see you've got warp and warp copy. So what we're going to do, this is going to be our warp layer. This is a little technique that I found over at uh, one of the GIMP forums called GIMP Talk. There's a lot of tutorials there that you can go and browse through and learn different techniques. And this is just one I found there. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working on our top layer there, the warp copy. Go over to Filters and go down to Map and then warp and then your warp options will pop up basically the tutorial that I found said just to leave these at default you can play with uh, some of the settings here if you want to see what you could come up with but just for these purposes let's go ahead and keep it simple and just hit OK so if you look closely we can zoom in and you can see where it's sort of created. Looks like uh, pretty good brush strokes to me. So zoom that back out. Next, what we want to do is we want to set this layer mode. So make sure you have this top layer selected and go up here to where it says mode and normal. You have a little drop down. So click on your drop down and you want to set that to hard light and what that did it sort of blended these two layers together and with a, a hard light overlay and then what we want to do is right click on this top layer and select merge down which will combine those two layers so now again we back we're back to we have our base layer which is right now set to invisible and you wouldn't see it anyway because you've got the warp layer above that that's that's filling up uh, the screen so um, the two layers we just created we combined and merged those down and we're back to just our base layer and warp layer now what we want to do is go ahead and duplicate our warp layer so click on that duplicate it I want to right click on that edit layer attributes and I want to name this one oil that way again it just helps me keep organized and know what layer I'm working on what I'm trying to accomplish with each layer so with our oil layer selected I want to go up to filters and then to artistic and then you want to go to oilify uh, if you look at the little pop-up smears colors to simulate an oil painting well you might ask well, why didn't we just do that to begin with well I'm just wanting to show you a few different techniques a few different combinations of things that ultimately if you do these and you play with them the whole point is to just to give you some ideas of some things that you can do and then you just come up with your own techniques and create your own so click on oilify and if you look just at the default settings you could tell that that really kind of makes it look like a like an oil painting um, you can see these are my arches 
for the uh, steps going up. You can kind of move that around if you need to. Um, when you kind of click on it and move it, it sort of goes back to what your original image looks like, and then you let go, it, it shows you sort of what the effect that you're applying does. And you can play with these sizes. You want to make sure that this use intensity algorithm is checked. And you can just uh, play with these settings. The lower you set them, the less sort of pixelated it becomes up here. Um, I think six or a seven on both of these looks pretty good to me. And so just play with them, come up with something that you like. Because again, ultimately, we're going to be combining several different layers, several different techniques of overlays and different things in opacity and things like that. And just uh, to kind of come up with an overall image of what you're trying to achieve. And just a few things to play with. Again, again, these are just techniques to use. You can go up here and change this layer mode to overlay and use the, either the little um, arrows up and down here or you can just click and drag in this box to change the opaci opacity in this layer um, and just kind of come up with a combination of things. If you drop the opacity way down, it's sort of you can see that all you're seeing now is just your warp layer and if you click back to the oil layer and start raising that opacity back up then the more you, you the more you bring that in the, the more you see what that next oil layer is doing um, a lot of different other techniques that you can use you can even take your base layer and just use your arrow here and move it to the top and if I click my eyeball back on, you'll see that all I'm seeing now is my base layer. You can change the opacity with it, bring it way down to where you're seeing just what's below it, and start bringing it back in to give a little bit more definition or change the color sort of back to, you know, more of the original color. So there are a lot of different things that you can do. You could even take this base layer, duplicate it again, you can go to filters and blur and apply a Gaussian blur to it and just I'm just going to use the the regular settings there and you can also blend that in you can create a new layer um, go over here and use your blend tool um, drop a gradient in there use different blend modes to blend that gradient in you can pick a layer and edit the curves. There are a lot of different ways that you can accomplish this, uh, and I'm just showing you a couple of them. The main thing here is to get you started, and then from there you can experiment. You can find other tutorials that you can use other techniques and sort of combine it all together. The main thing is just learning how to work in layers, learning how to work in different overlay modes you learn how to work with your opacity to blend that with the layers below it until you come up with something that you think looks really cool okay so the last thing we want to do is apply our canvas effect to this so i went back to basically my three original layers my base layer warp layer and my oil layer uh, I have my oil layer set to overlay with an opacity of 70 and the warp layer is just everything normal 100% opacity on that one. So what we want to do now to get a nice looking little canvas effect is either you can just right click over here and make a new layer or you can go down here and click on this little uh, little piece of paper here and that creates a new layer we want it to be a white layer it's the only thing you have to worry about setting and uh, you can name it canvas and just hit OK and so now what we want to do is go ahead and apply our filter to create the canvas look so go back up to your filters and we want to select artistic and then apply canvas and this uh, I have set to three top right preview that looks pretty good so just hit OK and as you can see we have a nice looking little canvas so let's go back over to our layers and we want to set this layer mode uh, if you go up to your drop down you want to set that to multiply 
And when you do that, you see we have a nice looking little canvas in our background. And it looks really good. Now, if you think that that canvas texture is just a little too rough looking, uh, what you can always do is you can just uh, hide that layer, create a new layer, make sure it is set to white, hit OK, and do the filter all over again, and artistic, apply canvas, and then just lower this setting here. The lower you make that, the less of a texture you're really going to see. Uh, one is almost invisible on my monitor, uh, so if you go to two, and then just go back to this layer and set it to multiply and then you see it's just a little less definitive in your uh, your final image so what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and export our dds file that we will be using in the game so take a look over here at our layers right now we only have three layers visible uh, we've got that one turned off, and then we've got our base layer, which we always want to save. We've got those turned off. And what we need to do is we need to get these three layers that we can see merged down into one layer so we can export that uh, as a DDS file. So a very simple process. Just go over here and right-click, and then go all the way down to the bottom and click on Merge Visible Layers. And a little dialog box will pop up and just click Merge. And if you look back over here, uh, we've got the canvas layer that we uh, could not see, and we got our base layer that we could not see, and it merged everything into this warp layer. So what we are going to do is we want to export that warp layer. So with that layer selected, go to File, and then hit Export. And then I've already, I already got mine up here named DDS, but all you have to do is backspace that out and type in DDS and hit save and I've already got one there it's going to ask me if I want to replace it and the settings are uh, on the compression we want to set that to BC3 slash DXT5 and we also want to make sure that we have the generate MIP maps that option needs to be selected that's what's going to create the uh, progressively smaller textures that the game uses so just uh, make sure those two are selected and hit OK and since we merged this layer I don't want to keep that I want to undo so we'll go back to our uh, other file we had before that or other version uh, with all of the separate layers and then I want to go over here and just hit save so there we have it